How's it going, everyone? In this video, I want to highlight a brand new RPG that has been revealed for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, and that is a tribute to classic JRPGs, and that is Sea of Stars. This is a game that we've known about for a little bit, however, it was never uh, said to be released on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. What they had said was Nintendo Switch, PC, and platforms to be determined or to be announced, something to that effect, but today, it was finally announced that Sea of Stars will be available for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 alongside its previously announced Nintendo Switch and PC releases when the game launches in 2023 coming from developer Sabotage Studio. Now, this was a game that was held funded via Kickstarter a while back. I believe they, like, blew past their expectations and what their initial goal was. So, good on them. And they're creating something that I think will be up the alley to a lot of people, especially if you play JRPGs in the 90s or you're a fan of these classic uh, throwback JRPGs because it's definitely something that, again, is a tribute to some of the classics reminiscent of some Super Nintendo JRPGs, and there's an in-depth blog post uh, over on the PlayStation blog with a lot of information about the game, and I just want to get the word out about the game a little bit because, again, it hasn't been announced for PlayStation 4 and 5, but something that I could imagine a lot of you guys will be excited for. So, Sabotage was founded with a clear goal in mind, presenting our own definitive editions of the game genres we grew up playing by combining retro aesthetics and modern design. We shoot for experiences that capture what we loved about games of old while leaving behind the elements we feel might hold them back today. For our very own turn-based RPG, we started with a few simple guidelines. There would be seamless transitions from navigation to combat, no random encounters, and no grinding. Combat is obviously a big one, so let's dive a bit deeper. The game notes an actual turn-based combat system, and Sea of Stars combat is purely turn-based without any time bars, avoiding pressure in order to let the player make decisions at their own pace instead. Each of the six playable characters come with a small kit of four spells and skills with differing damage types and patterns, which can be combined with other characters' as moves. MP has a very low cap, but regenerates when using normal attacks, creating a flow where using magic in a regular fight is expected, while the big head Heavy hitter spells have to be paced with some normal attacks when fighting a boss. No random encounter means every fight is designed manually to offer a unique pattern of enemies that can be analyzed and optimized by the savvy Solstice Warrior and other combat features come together into a dance between utility and damage. Then they also talk about locks. Enemies that mount spells or special skills will display a bar with locks, each with an icon of a certain damage type. Breaking locks will weaken the upcoming move while breaking all of them will cancel it all together. Each of the playable characters can dish out damage efficiently and one or two of the types further supported by their skill and spell kit which offers a pattern variations like aoe or multi-hit and then there's different mechanics you have in here as well as i mentioned a little while ago but there's also the timed hit mechanic in order to make turn-based combat more engaging pressing the action button in sync with the animation increases damage output while reducing incoming damage the outcome of virtually every combat action can be influenced by pressing a button at the right time whether it's bouncing a lunar projectile back and forth blocking enemy attacks or fetching a better snack out of a backpack I find that rather interesting because anecdotally speaking, when I talk to a lot of people around my age, um, the idea of the turn-based battle system, sometimes it doesn't get the best reception in the world. So how do you make a turn-based battle system also be engaging to a modern audience? I think that's what they're going for here to make that uh, more of an engaging playstyle. I still think turn-based playstyle just as a turn-based RPG fan can still work pretty darn well without tweaking it all too much, but I do often hear about, you know, people wanting more action-oriented games or everything like that. But obviously, I think uh, turn-based RPGs still have a market in today's gaming landscape, and it seems like in this case, they are trying to go for a route where, you know, it's a turn-based system that pays homage to a lot of the classics, but also tries to make it a little bit more engaging, and I can definitely appreciate that. And on top of that, you have combo moves, all combat actions build energy that eventually turn into combo points, which can be spent to perform dual attacks, combining the patterns and damage types of both characters. Combo points are the only cost, no MP, and they are lost when the battle ends, so there are no downsides into spending them. And then you have boosting. Normal attacks generate live mana, which can be absorbed by any playable character when they need an extra kick. Boosting can be stacked up to three times, each adding a portion of the unique character's magic attack to their next action. It also comes in handy with a character's unique magic damage type is needed, but they are out of MP. On top of all of that, that's just combat. You look at Unshackled Traversal, they note swim, climb, vault, jump off, or hoist up ledges as you traverse seamlessly through the world with a navigation system based on platformer expertise that breaks free from the classic bounce of the grid tile set movement. 
So again, they're trying to have a little bit of a different take with exploration as well. You've got full-on dynamic lighting. Our custom-made render pipeline allows the creation of a breathtaking world coming to life by pushing the limits of 2D pixel art games. Story-rich adventure. Dozens of original characters and story arcs will take you on a captivating journey. Sometimes epic, sometimes silly, and sometimes emotional. Sea of Stars does its RPG duty of exploring classic themes of adventure and friendship while also being chock full of the unexpected twists and events you'd expect from a sabotage production and a world that you can touch. There are many ways to hang out in the world of Sea of Stars if you feel the need of a change of pace in your adventures. You've got sailing, cooking, fishing, stopping by a tavern to listen to a song, or play the infamous tabletop game known as Wheel. So quite a bit of depth to a game that, you know, I'm not saying this game has the biggest budget in the world and whatnot, but it looks like there's a lot of care being put into it. And again, I think for myself and a lot of you guys that are fans of Japanese RPGs and classic JRPGs, this is something that immediately when you look at the art style you're captivated by, and then also learning more about the gameplay, uh, the fact that it is adopting this turn-based style, but also introducing some interesting mechanics, uh, I hope that pans out pretty strongly. And this is a game that I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on. Now, it was scheduled for a release initially in 2022. Unfortunately, it did see a delay. It is now scheduled for release in 2023. But hey, take your time. This is a brand new game, and I think it has a lot of potential. So that is going to do it for me. Just wanted to get more eyeballs on this game since I think it's one with a lot of potential. And again, as a big JRPG fan, we cover a lot of those on this channel. It's one that I thought I would bring to the forefront. That's going to do it for me. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.